Chapter Thirteen of Concerning Cats. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. Or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Concerning Cats by Helen M. Winslow. Chapter Thirteen Concerning Varieties of Cats. Few people realize how many kinds of cats there are. The fashionable world begins to discuss cats technically and understand their various points of excellence. The Lord Mayor's chain, the Dutch rabbit markings, and similar features are understood by more cat fanciers than a few years ago. But until within that time, it is doubtful if the number of people who knew the difference between the Angora and the Persian in this country amounted to a hundred. It is but a few years since the craze for the Angora cat started. These cats have been fashionable pets in England for some years back, and now America begins to understand their value, and the principles of breeding them. Today there are as handsome, well-bred animals in the United States as can be found abroad. The demand for high-bred animals with a pedigree is greatly increasing, and society people are beginning to understand the fine points of the thoroughbred. The Angora cat, as its name indicates, comes from Angora in Western Asia, the province that is celebrated for its goats, with long hair of fine quality. In fact, the hair under the Angora cat's body often resembles the finest of the Angora goatskins. Angora cats are favorites with the Turks and Armenians, and exist in many colors, especially since they have been more carefully bred. They vary in form, color, and disposition, and also in the quality of their hair. The standard calls for a small head, with not too long a nose, large eyes that should harmonize in color with the fur, small pointed ears with a tuft of hair at the apex, and a very full fluffy mane around the neck. This mane is known as the Lord Mayor's chain. The body is longer than that of the ordinary cat, in proportion to its size, and is extremely graceful, and covered with long, silky hair, which is crinkly like that of the Angora goat. This hair should be as fine as possible, and not woolly. The legs are of a moderate length, but look short on account of the length of hair on the body. Little tufts of hair growing between the toes indicate high breeding. The Angora cat, in good condition, is one of the most beautiful and elegant creatures in the world, and few can resist its charm. The tail is long and like an ostrich plume. It's usually carried, when the cat is in good spirits, straight up, with the end waving over towards one side. The tail of the angora serves as a barometer of its bodily and mental condition. If the cat is ill or frightened, the tail droops, and sometimes trails on the ground. But when she is in good spirits, playing about the house or grounds, it waves like a great plume, and is exceedingly handsome. The suppleness of the angora's tail is also a mark of fine breeding. A hybrid angora will allow its tail to be doubled or twisted without apparent notice of the performance. The angora does not reach its prime until about two years. Before that time its head and body are not sufficiently developed to give the full beauty and grace of the animal. As a rule, the angora is of good disposition, although the females are apt to be exceedingly nervous. They are sociable and docile, although fond of roaming about, especially if allowed to run loose. As a rule, they do not possess the keen intelligence of the ordinary short-haired family cat, but their great beauty and their cleanly and affectionate habits make them favorites with fashionable people. The proper breeding of the Angora cat is a regular science. Of the colors of the Angoras, the blue or Maltese is a favorite, and rather common, especially when mixed with white. The white angora is extraordinarily beautiful, and brings a high price when it has blue eyes and all its points are equally good. The orange or yellow and the black with amber eyes are also prize winners. There are the tigers also, the brown tabby, and the orange and white. Mixed colors are more common than solid ones. The tortoise shell cat of three colors and well mottled being considered particularly desirable. The Persian cat differs from the angora in the quality of its fur, 
although the ordinary observer sees little difference between them. All the long-haired cats originated from the Indian Bengalese, Tibetan, and other wild cats of Asia and Russia. The Persian cat of very great value is all black, with a very fluffy frill, or Lord Mayne's chain, and orange eyes. Next to him comes a light slate or blue Persian with yellow eyes. The fur of the Persian cat is much more woolly than that of the Angora, and sometimes in hot weather smats badly. The difference between a Persian and an Angora can usually be told by an amateur, by drawing the tail between the thumb and first finger. The Angora's tail comes out thin, silky, and narrow, although it immediately fluffs up. The Persian's tail does not compress itself readily into a small space. The Persian cat's head is larger, its ears are less pointed, although it should have the tuft at the end and the long hair inside. It's usually larger in body and apparently stronger made, although slender and elegant in appearance, with small bones and graceful in movement. The colors vary, as with the Angora, except that the tortoise shell and the dark marked tabby do not so frequently appear. The temper is usually less reliable, and the intelligence less keen than the Angora. The Russian long-haired pet is much less common even than the Persian and Angora. It is fond of cold weather, and its fur is denser, indicating that it has been used to cold to regions. Many of the cats that we see are crosses of Angora and Persian, or Angora and Russian, so that it is extremely difficult for the amateur to know a thoroughbred cat which has not been mixed with other varieties. There is also a fine short-haired cat coming from Russia, usually self-colored. Mrs. Frederick Monroe, of Chicago, owns a very handsome blue and white one. In Pegu, Siam, and Burma, there is a race of cats known as the Malay cat, with tails only half the ordinary length, and often contorted into a sort of a knot that cannot be straightened after the fashion of the pug-dog, or ordinary pig. There is another cat known as the Mombas, a native of the west coast of Africa, and covered with stiff, bristling hair. Paraguay cats are only one quarter as big as our ordinary cat, and are found along the western coast of South America, even as far north as Mexico. The royal cat of Siam is a short-haired cat, yet widely different from other short-haired varieties. They are extremely pretty, with blue or amber-colored eyes by day, which grow brilliant at night. These cats also frequently have the kink in the tail, and sometimes a strong animal odor, although this is not disagreeable. The head is rather longer than the ordinary cats, tapering off sharply towards the muzzle, the forehead flat and receding, and the eyes more slanting towards the nose than the American cat's. The form should be slender, graceful, and delicately made, the body long, the tail very thin and rather short, the legs short and slender, and the feet oval. The body is of a bright, uniform color, and the legs, feet, and tail are usually black. The monk's cat is considered by many people as a natural curiosity, it differs from the ordinary domestic cat but little, except in the absence of a tail, or even an apology for one. The hind legs are thicker and rather longer than the ordinary cat's, and it runs more like a hare. It is not a graceful object when seen from behind, but it is an affectionate, home-loving creature with considerable intelligence. The Manx cat comes from the Isle of Man, originally, and it is a distinct breed, so-called Manx cats have tails from one to a few inches long, but these are crosses of the Manx and the ordinary cat. In the Crimea is found another kind of cat which has no tail. The cats known as the celebrated orange cats of Venice are probably descendants of the old Egyptian cat, and are of varying shades of yellow, sometimes deepening into a sandy color, which is almost red. There are obscure stripes on the body, which become more distinct on the limbs. The tail is more or less ranged towards the termination. There has been a newspaper paragraph floating about stating that a prize of several thousand dollars had been offered in England 
for a male tortoise-shell cat. This is probably not true, as a Mr. Smith exhibited a tortoise-shell he-cat at the Crystal Palace show of 1871. Several tortoise-shell and white toms have been exhibited since, and one of these has taken nine first prizes at the Crystal Palace show. But the tortoise-shell he-cat is extremely rare. The real tortoise-shell is not a striped tiger nor a tabby. It has three colors usually, black, yellow, and red or brown, but these appear in patches rather than stripes. It is said that the tortoise-shell cat is common in Egypt and the south of Europe. It comes from a different stock than the ordinary short-haired cat, the texture of the hair being different as well as the color. The tortoise-shell and white cat is much more common, and is the product of a cross between a tortoise-shell and a solid-color cat. In this case, the hair is usually coarser and the tail thicker than in the ordinary cat. Among cat fanciers, there is a distinctive variety known as the tortoise-shell tabby. As the tabby cat is one of the varieties of striped or spotted cats, having markings, broad or narrow, of bands of black on a dark tan or gray ground, the tortoise-shell cat would have both stripes and patches of color. Of the tabbies, there are brown tabbies, silver tabbies, and red tabbies. It is said that the red tabby she-cat is as scarce as the tortoise-shell he-cat. The ordinary observer considers the brown tabby with white markings as much the handsomest of the tabbies. But fanciers and judges do not agree with him, the cats having narrow bands and spots being the ones to take prizes. The word tabby, according to Harrison Ware, was derived from a kind of taffeta, or ribbed silk, which used to be called tabby silk. Other authorities state that tabby cats got their name from Atab, a street in Baghdad. But as this street was famous for its watered silks, perhaps the same reason holds. The tortoise shell used to be called, in England, the Kalimanko. In America it's sometimes called the calico cat. The red tabby is of a deep reddish or yellow brown, with a well ringed tail, orange or yellow eyes, and pink cushions on the feet. The brown tabby is orange brown, with black lips, brown whiskers, black feet, black pads, long tail, greenish orange eyes, and red nose bordered with black. The spotted tabby must have no bands at all. It must be brown, red, or yellow, with black spots. In the brown tabby the feet and pads are black. In the yellow and red the feet and pads are pink. The spotted cat sometimes resembles a leopard, while the banded tabby resembles more the tiger. Some of the spotted tabbies are extremely handsome, and came originally from a cross between the ordinary cat and the wild cat. Self-colored cats are entirely of one color, which may vary in different cats, but must never be mixed in the same cat, nor even shaded into lighter tone on the animal. And whether this color be black, blue, red, or yellow, the self-colored cat should have a rich, deep tint. Of course, the short-haired white cat is the handsomest of all. One of the peculiarities of this white cat is that it is apt to be deaf, the most valuable white cats, whether long or short-haired, have blue eyes. Sometimes they have one blue eye and one green or yellow, which gives a comical effect, and detracts from their value. By the way, cross-eyed cats are not unknown. The best white cats have a yellowish-white tint, instead of grayish-white, as the latter have a coarser quality of fur. The jet-black cat is thought by many to be the most desirable. The true black cat should have a uniform, intensely black coat, velvety and extremely glossy. The eyes should be round and full, and of a brilliant amber. The nose and pads of the feet should be jet black, and the tail long and tapering. It is difficult to find a black cat without a white hair, as usually there are a few under the chin or on the belly. The blue cat is the one ordinarily known in this country as the dark Maltese. There is a tradition that it came from the island of Malta. Many people do not consider it a distinct breed, but think 
it a light-colored variety of the black cat. It is known sometimes as the archangel, sometimes as the Russian blue, the Spanish blue, the chartreuse blue, but more commonly in this country as the Maltese. When it is of a deep bluish color, or of the soft silver-gray Maltese without stripes, it is extremely handsome. The most desirable are the bluish lilac-colored ones, with soft fur like sealskin. The nose and pads of the feet are dark, and the eyes are orange-yellow. The Maltese and white cat, when well marked, is extremely handsome, and there is no prettier kitten than the Maltese and white. The black and white, yellow and white, blue and white, and in fact any self-colored and white cat, is a mixture of the other breeds. If well marked, they are extremely handsome, and are usually bright and intelligent. The solid gray cat is very rare. It is, in fact, a tabby without the black stripes or spots. In Australia, New Zealand, and New Guinea, there used to be no cat of any kind. The Siamese cat has been imported to Australia, and some authorities claim that the cats known in this country as Australian cats are of Siamese origin. Madagascar is a catless region. There is in this country a variety known as the coon cat, which is handsome, especially in the solid black. Its native home is in Maine, and it is thought by many to have originated with the ordinary cat and the raccoon. It grows somewhat larger than the ordinary cat, with thick, woolly fur and an extremely bushy tail. It is fond of outdoor life, and when kept as a pet must be allowed to run out of doors, or it is apt to become so savage and disagreeable that nothing can be done with it. When it is allowed its freedom, however, it becomes affectionate, intelligent, and is usually a handsome cat. The term Dutch rabbit markings refers to the white markings on the cat of two or three colors. Evidently, the cats themselves understand the value of Dutch rabbit markings, as one which has them is invariably proud of them. A cat that has white mittens, for instance, is often inordinately vain, and keeps them in the most immaculate state of cleanliness. End of chapter 13